an electric motor that has to operate unattended for long periods or even 24-7 is exposed to burning its windings due to a few seconds of a line phase drop. This is especially important if the motor can cause a fire or simply requires expensive repairs. A large three-phase motor can require extremely costly repairs. This simple circuit provides protection against phase loss and can prevent unpleasant surprises. You can build it yourself at low cost. It's very easy to install it in heavy-duty equipment equipped with a start-stop push-button station because you can simply connect it in series with the stop or emergency stop button. In this video we will show you how to build it and thus protect a three-phase motor. The necessary items are three 220-240 volt relays. The relays must be identical. As for the number of contacts, each relay must have at least one normally open contact available. Three 10 watt resistors are also required. The value in ohms will be determined during the calibration process, done without any special equipment. 3 1N4007 diodes, 1 kV reverse peak, are also required. The last necessary items are 3 50 microfarad at 450 volts electrolytic capacitors. This diagram shows the circuit to be built for each relay. In the case of a three-phase installation, three similar units will be required, one unit per phase. The operation is very simple. When the power line voltage of each phase is maintained above 110 volts, the capacitor will have sufficient charge to keep the corresponding relay energized and its contacts closed. If the power line voltage in one or more phases drops, say to about 100 volts, the corresponding relay is deactivated and its contacts open. Turning off the push button station as if someone had pressed the stop button. Since the normally open contacts in the three relays are in series, one relay deactivated is all it takes to turn the motor off. When the power mains become normal again, all you have to do is restart the machine through the push button station in the usual manner. The construction of the circuit starts by building one of the three units and calibrating it in a very simple way. For this purpose, a voltmeter is connected across the voltage input to the unit between phase and neutral. This voltmeter will indicate the voltage the unit is receiving at a given time. Although resistor R1 is shown as 1500 ohms, this value depends on the sensitivity of the coil of the relay being used. It is best to make sure by feeding the unit through a variable resistor, in this case the salt water container, and perform several tests with various values for resistance of R1. While adjusting the position of the screwdriver immersed in the water to the values of connection and disconnection. Allow approximately one second for the relay to respond. When moving the screwdriver away from the L1 cable dipped into the water, the voltage at the input of the unit will be less. As you move it closer, the voltage increases. You must select the resistance value that keeps the relay active until the line voltage decreases by about 4 volts below 110.
Once the appropriate value of the resistance R1 is determined for the relays being used, that value is used for all three units. If the components are high quality, it is very likely that no additional calibration is required. If you want to have the maximum of certainty, it is advisable to test each unit separately and substitute the value of R1 in each case according to the results. And that is all. The protector is installed in the machine by connecting the three phases of the inputs L1, L2 and L3 and the normally open contacts of the relays connected in series with each other and also in series with the machine's stop push button. It is essential to make the connection of the neutral wire as shown in the drawing, as each unit must monitor each phase with respect to the neutral wire. I hope this video has been useful to you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.